features of collecting complaints, medical history and life history of the patient with respiratory system disease. The main components of examining a patient with respiratory disease include a history, physical examination, and in most cases, a chest x-ray. Based on these findings, indication for further testing is determined, including pulmonary function testing and arterial blood gas analysis, computer tomography, and other chest imaging and bronchoscopy. Anamnesis often a history can establish the likelihood that symptoms such as cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, wheezing, and hemoptysis are associated with the pulmonary disease. The history should also establish whether constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, and night sweats are present. Other important information includes exposure to harmful effects, occupational and environmental factors, family history, travel history, pre-existing disease or concomitant disease, prescription, illegal prescription, and tobacco products, and other inhaled substance results or previous tests, tuberculin test, chest x-ray. Objective examination, the physical examination includes an assessment of the patient appearance. Restlessness and shitty constitutional features, the influence of the patient conversation or movements on the severity of symptoms, for example, the inability to pronounce full sentence without a break. All this should be assessed during the conversation and history taking. Signs that may contain useful information regarding the state of respiratory disease. Objective examination, a thorough examination, the lens consists of inspection, auscultation, percussion, palpation of the chest. Objective examination patients with lung disease should undergo a complete physical examination, including examination of the lymph nodes, skin, and musculoskeletal system. Patient examination during the examination, you should pay attention to symptoms of difficulty breathing and hypoxemia. During the examination, you should pay attention to symptoms of chronic respiratory disease. Sickening of the terminal phalanges of the fingers like drumstick and swelling of the feet. Patient examination. During examination, you should pay attention to chest deformation. One examination look for respiratory distress, prolonged respiratory time, chain stock respiration, kusmal respiration. During examination, you should pay attention to swelling of the jugular veins. Symptoms of hypoxemia is cyanosis, blueness of the lips, face, or nail beds, which occurs at minimum concentration of insaturated hemoglobin of 5 gram deciliter and indicates low oxygen saturation of arterial blood less than 85%. The absence of cyanosis thus includes the presence of hypoxemia. Symptoms of difficulty breathing include tachypnea, participation in the act of breathing of additional muscle groups, sternocleidomastoidoid, intercostal scalene, restriction of intercostal space, and parad paradoxical breathing.
Patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease sometimes they take a forced position. They raise their hands or their legs or lean on the table in order to strengthen the work of additional muscle groups. Intercostal restriction, inward movement of the intercostal muscles during inspiration, often occurs in young children and elderly patients with severely reduced air intake. Paradoxical breathing, uh, indicated muscle fatigue or weakness of the respiratory muscle. Symptoms of chronic respiratory disease include drumsticks, barrel-shaped chest in patients with emphysema disease and increase in the anterior-posterior size of the chest, breathing through pursed lips. The most common symptoms of clubbing is lung cancer, but is also an important symptom of chronic lung disease such as cystic fibrosis and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Fibrosis. Drumstick a match less than common. The symptom occurs in heart disease accompanied by cyanosis, chronic infections, for example, infective endocarditis, stroke, inflammatory bowel disease, and cirrhosis of the liver. Drumstick sometimes sickening of the terminal phalanx occurs with osteoarthropathy and periosteitis. Primary or hereditary hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. In this case, the sickening may be accompanied by skin change, such as hypertrophy of the skin on the dorsum of the hands, seborrhea, and the ruining of the facial features. Drumsticks, sickening of the terminal phalanges can also occur as an benign hereditary abnormality, which can be. Drumsticks, sickening of the terminal phalanges can also occur as a bending hereditary abnormality, which can be distinguished from the pathological sickening by the absence of pulmonary symptoms or disease and by presence of sickening from the early age. Some patients with emphysema have an increase in the anterior posterior size of the chest emphysematous chest, barrel chest, and look at this, this picture. This is patient with emphysematous chest. In parsed lip breathing, a person exhales through tightly closed lips and inhales through the nose with the mouth closed. This technique will increase the pressure in the airways, keeping them open and terrible reducing gas building up in the lungs. Chest wall deformities such as sunken chest. The sunken chest usually begins at the mid manubrium of the sternum and progresses inwards through the C4 process of the sternum and kyphoscoliosis can limit breathing and aggravated symptoms of pre existing lung disease.
These abnormalities can usually be noted upon careful examination of the patient with the upper torso exposed. Look at this picture. How deformation the patient chest. The examination should also include an assessment of the abdominal cavity and the degree of obesity, presence of ascites or other conditions that may affect the abdominal cavity. By type of the breathing disorder, it is possible to assume the disease that weighs the echoes and increase in the exhalation to inhalation. Ratio occurs in obstructive pulmonary disease. Some types of breathing disorders result in change in breathing rate, so the respiratory rate should be counted over one minute. And we have and types first chain stocks breathing this is periodic breathing this is a cycle change in the frequency and depth of breathing after short periods of apnea there is a progressive increase in the frequency and depth of breathing hyperpnea then breathing slows down and becomes less deep until apnea develops after which the cycle repeats chain stocks breathing most often occur in a heart failure neurological disease and also as result of medications breeze biota this is a rare variant of chain stocks breathing in which irregular episodes of apnea alternate with periods consisting of four or five deep equal breaths. Unlike chain stocks, respiration by respiration is characterized by a sudden start and stop as well as lock of periodicity. This type of breathing is characteristic of damage to the central nervous system and occurs in disease such as meningitis. Kussmaul's breath represents regular deep breathing caused by metabolic acidosis. Filling of the jugular veins assessed with the patient titled at 45 grados, the upper part of the venous trunk is usually located just above the clavicle, upper limit of normal 4 cm above the jugular notch of the sternum in the vertical plane. An increase in column height will indicate left um, ventricular dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension, right side. Heart failure, cardiac tamponade, constrictive pericarditis or combination tereof and should lead to a search for all the cardiac signs. Galloprutum nausea congestive edema. Auscultation of the lungs is the most important component of the physical examination. All areas of the chest should be uh, auscultated, including the sides and anterior chest to detect abnormalities associated with each lobe of the lung. Lung auscultation points is the most important component of the physical examination 
all areas of the chest should be auscultated, including the sides and the anterior chest to detect abnormalities associated with each lobe of the lung. Look at this picture. And when listening, you need to pay attention on the nature and intensity of respiratory sound, presence of absence of voice notes, pleural friction rap. On auscultation of the heart, symptoms of pulmonary hypertension can be identified such as an accent of the second sound of the pulmonary artery and right ventricular failure. The appearance of a fourth sound, S4, a regurgitant murmur of the tricuspid valve. The nature and the intensity of breathing allows you to judge the presence of respiratory disease. Normally, vesicular breathing is heard over the lungs. Bronchial breathing sounds louder, high in pitch and sharper. Normally, it can be heard over the trachea as well as of dense areas of the lungs, for example, is with pneumonia. Adventitial sounds include crepitus, dry wheezing, and strider. Crepitus represent intermittent adventitial sounds. Fine rails are short-term, high-frequency sounds. Coarse rolls are longer, low-frequency sounds. Wheezing is usually compared to the sound of cellophane, crinking, or velcro opening in interstitial lung disease. They can be simulated by rubbing the hair with two fingers near the ear. Crepitation occurs most often with atelectasis, filling of the alveoli with liquid contents, for example, pulmonary edema, interstitial lung disease, for example, pulmonary fibrosis. It indicates the opening of constricted AOAs or alveoli. Dry wheezing wheezing a low pitched wheezes that are heard during inhalation and exhalation or exhalation. They occur in a large number of diseases, including chronic bronchitis. The mechanism of wheezing is associated with varying degrees of obstruction during stretching of the airways during inspiration and narrowing during expiration. Dry wheezing are whistling musical wheezes that intensify on exhalation and include narrowing or small airways, bronchioles. Dry wheezing is usually accompanied by shortness of breath and can be detected during objective examination of patients themselves accompanied. Stridor, these are high frequency, predominantly respiratory sounds produced by abstraction of the airways outside the chest cavity. They are usually audible without a phonodoscope. Stridor is usually much louder than wheezing is heard primarily during inspiration and is best detected above the larynx when stridor appears. The development of life treating upper airway obstruction should be suspected. Decreased breathing. 
Decreased breathing indicates poor air movements in the airways, which occurs in asthma and stupidity when bronchospasm or other mechanisms restrict airflow. Breathing may be also impaired by the presence of pleural fluid, pneumothorax, or endobronchial obstruction. Voice noises occur when the patient speaks. And we have two types, bronchophony and egophony. Bronchophony and whispered uh, pectoricolvia occur when the patient's voice or whisper is conducted through the chest wall. Sound transmission occurs from the alveolar seal as occurs in pneumonia. Pleural friction rub. These are creaking or rustling sounds that change during the respiratory cycle and are described as the sound of wet skin rubbing. This is signs and inflammation of the pleura. They are heard during pleurisy or pleural MPMA, as well as after thoracotomy also. Inhale and exhale. Normally, the inspiratory to expiratory uh, ratio is 1 to 2, but when airflow is limited, such as in asthma and COPD, the ratio becomes uh, less than 1 to 3, even the absence of breathing. Percussion, this is the main method of objective examination used to identify the presence and determining the level of fluid in the pleural cavity. Palpation includes the detection of vocal tremors. Vibration of the chest when speaking. A weakening of vocal tremors is absorbed in the presence of pleural effusion and the pneumothorax, and an intensification is absorbed with compact of the lungs tissue, for example, with lower pneumonia. Local pain on palpation may be indicate a refracture or costochondral dislocation or inflammatory process. Lecture begum tawapqazı. Okay, guys. Next time I will check your notes. Bye bye.